Our topic today is gout and its treatment. The risk for gout greatly increases as levels of uric acid in the blood exceed 7 mg per deciliter. High levels of uric acid in the blood is known as hyperuricemia. When blood uric acid levels exceed 7 mg per deciliter, fluids of the body, like synovial fluid in joints, may become saturated with uric acid. The uric acid then precipitates to form urate crystals in the synovial joints, causing gouty arthritis. Imagine getting 100 milliliters or so of water and adding a teaspoon of salt to it and then mixing it. Eventually, the salt dissolves as it dissociates into sodium and chloride ions. However, if you added excessive amounts of salt to the water, even after mixing it, you would still see solid salt in solution. This is because there simply isn't enough solvent to dissolve all the salt crystals. The same principle applies to fluids of the body. If there is too much uric acid in synovial fluid, the uric acid will tend to precipitate to form urate crystals. These crystals form mainly in the joints of the toes, fingers, knees, and elbows due to the lower temperature of the synovial fluid. This lower temperature doesn't allow as much of the urate to be dissolved, so it forms crystals. The crystals elicit an immune response, bringing about inflammation and intense pain. Over time, uncontrolled gout can lead to bulged, deformed joints, a condition called gouty arthritis. Tophi are urate crystalline deposits around the joints and on the surface of the skin. High levels of urate also increases the risk for urate stones forming in the kidney. Once inside the joints, phagocytes release hydrogen ions in an attempt to attack and break down the crystals that have formed. Phagocytes are attempting to help, but actually make the condition worse, allowing additional crystals to form. This happens as increased hydrogen ions produced by the phagocytes combine with urate anions to form additional HA, which is the anionized form that is less soluble in aqueous solution and more likely to form into crystals. Remember that the anionized form, or HA shown, is much less soluble in solutions and precipitates to form crystals. So where does all this uric acid come from? 80% of our, of our body's uric acid comes from the breakdown of purines. Adenine and guanine are purine nitrogenous bases used in nucleotides to build RNA and DNA. When a cell dies, these purines must be disposed of. The body does this by converting purines into hypoxanthine, which is then converted into xanthine, and finally to uric acid. This breakdown or metabolism is performed by the enzyme xanthine oxidase. The process is carried out mainly in the liver and contributes to roughly 80% of the body's uric acid. The other 20% comes in the diet and is increased by consuming products high in purines, like red meat, oily fish, alcohol, and beans. In summary, conditions that lead to hyperuricemia and gout are as follows. Enzyme defects that result in overproduction of uric acid, diet from the overconsumption of purines, renal failure, which causes a lack of uric acid excretion, cancer treatment, which causes cell death, and diabetes and obesity, which bring about a more acidic environment that favors uric acid deposition. Anti-gout medications fall under two main categories. Those used to treat the pain and inflammation associated with acute gout attack, and those used to, treat, to lower uric acid concentration in the blood to help prevent a gout attack. NSAIDs are the first-line therapy for most patients with gout. The NSAIDs, indomethacin and naproxen, are commonly used and act to reduce prostaglandins associated with pain and inflammation. Like NSAIDs, colchicine is also used for acute attacks, but is considered second-line treatment. Colchicine comes from the crocus plant. Colchicine inhibits the activity of phagocytes, by inhibiting leukocyte migration and phagocytosis. These actions decrease the release of acids from the phagocytes into the joints, 
which prevents additional accumulation of urate crystals. Colchicine is useful during the first 48 hours of, an, of a gout attack and also acts as an anti-inflammatory. Other medications prevent gout attacks. These fall under two main categories. The first are hypouricemic agents and include allopurinol and febuxostat. These agents function to inhibit the actions of xanthine oxidase, thus preventing the formation of uric acid. Febuxostat is more selective than allopurinol in its inhibition of xanthine oxidase, but it is also more expensive. Another category used to prevent gout attacks are the uricosuric agents. Medications in this category include probenicid and sulfonpyrazone. These medications act to inhibit urate reabsorption in the kidneys. In the proximal tubule of the nephron, urate is reabsorbed back into the blood by a specific urate transporter. Probenicid acts to compete with urate for this transporter thus blocking urate reabsorption and increasing the excretion of urate into the urine. This excretion of urate lowers the amount of urate in the blood. Here now is a summary of the anti-gout medications. NSAIDs such as endomethacin and aproxen and colchicine are used to treat acute attacks. For prevention of gout attacks, hypouricemic agents like allopurinol and febuxostat decrease uric acid production and uricosuric agents, like probenicid and sulfonpyrazone, increase uric acid excretion. Please assess your understanding now by answering some questions. If you answered the following, you are correct. Thanks for watching.